Welcome to Understanding Networking Part 1. In this video, we're going to start understanding networking. Now, there are so many different things that you have to do to interoperate different systems. We have to put some structure into the discussion so we can discuss separate issues separately and not get things all jumbled up. So we'll get started with the OSI 7 layer reference model and understand protocol stacks. And then we'll go through the IP story and understand IP version 4 address classes and dynamic addresses and network address translation. And then towards the end of this course, we're going to understand bandwidth on demand services from telecommunication service providers and go through the idea of a packet network service from the phone company and how these are actually implemented using virtual circuits. And we'll understand MPLS and how TCP IP goes end to end across an MPLS network. It can be hard sometimes to understand how this actually works. So why don't we think of an example, not using computer to computer communications, but communications between two different companies. Let's say that uh, you decided to quit your job and start your own company. And your startup company was going to make personal computers. You were going to try to be the next Michael Dell. And to make your computers different than everybody else's, you were going to put them in cube-shaped transparent boxes. Then they'd be different than everybody else's. But your startup company doesn't know how to make cube-shaped transparent computer cases. So you have to find another company to make the cases for you. And if you shop around, you'll find the right place for that is Taiwan. Now let's say that you're the chief engineer at your startup company. You're also the mailroom clerk, but that's a different story altogether. You have to communicate the specification for the cases to your counterpart at the company in Taiwan, like what thickness plastic you want, the dimensions, the tolerance, the surface finish, the color, how many of them you want. So what you do is you fire up some application software like Microsoft Word that lets you enter your thoughts and turn them into a message. And then you print the specification out on a piece of paper and you're holding the spec in your hand. Now you have to convey it to your counterpart at the company in Taiwan. But there are a whole bunch of things you don't know how to do. You don't know whether that person speaks English or not. You don't know how to get to Taiwan. You could figure it out, but you don't know. So what do you do? Well, you call up your presentation layer office assistant. And you say, well, I finished the spec and I have to send it to that person, but I don't know whether they speak English or not. And your presentation layer office assistant says, well, don't you worry about that. That's my problem. And I have an agreement with my counterparts in the word processing department of that company in Taiwan. What I do is I take a yellow post-it note and write written in English, in English, and put that on your document and send it to the word processing department and they'll figure out whether it needs to be translated or recoded. So don't you worry about that. That's my problem. And I have an agreement with my counterparts how to handle that problem. So I say, great, and I, I hand the person the document. They write written in English, in English, on a post-it note, put it on the document, put that in an envelope, seal the envelope, and address it to the word processing department at the company in Taiwan. Now, they have to send it to the word processing department, but there's no connection there. They have to go down the protocol stack to get to the physical layer to actually send it. And the next stop down is the session layer the session layer lawyers and they're going to check to see whether the contract's been signed and the non-disclosure agreement's been signed they'll check yes yes and charge some amount of money to your budget and then put your envelope 
in a heavy cardboard envelope and seal that with string and wax. Now, I don't know if you've ever dealt with lawyers or not, but lawyers don't like talking directly to the other party's clients. Lawyers like talking to the other party's lawyers. So the lawyers are going to send this to the legal department at the company in Taiwan. And then the lawyer is going to go down to the transport department to actually send this and throw it in the inbox. And the chief transport clerk is going to pick this up, look at the destination, says Taiwan. He's going to say, well, wait a minute, Mr. Lawyer. How do you want to get to Taiwan? We've got lots of different choices. Do you want reliable service? I could get in my automobile, drive to the airport, charter a plane, fly to Taiwan, rent a car, drive to that building, hand the receiving department your envelope, get a signed receipt, fly back and hand you the receipt. That would be like a dedicated line. And the lawyer says, well, I don't know, that sounds kind of expensive. Do you have anything cheaper? So the transport clerk says, well, we could take your document and put it in a padded mailing envelope, put $12 worth of stamps on it, throw it in a box at the side of the street. Maybe it'll get delivered. Maybe it won't. We'll never know, but that sure is cheap. That would be like the internet. And the lawyer says, I don't know. Are you got anything in between these two ideas? So the transport clerk says, well, what about FedEx? Their network goes to Taiwan. Two-day international priority, $78. And you get a printed receipt saying who signed for it when it was delivered. That would be like a commercial data communication service. So the lawyer says, great, let's send it by FedEx. Now the transport clerk is the one who's actually responsible for sending it via FedEx's network. So the transport clerk gets out a FedEx network envelope, puts his heavy cardboard envelope in there, seals it, and then gets out a FedEx network address form and writes the destination address on this and glues it onto the package or packet. And then the transport clerk calls up FedEx and they arrive with a link layer truck and we put the package on the truck and they drive it over a layer one physical road to Taiwan. Not. Where do all FedEx roads lead to? Think Elvis Presley. Memphis. All FedEx roads lead to Memphis. They got a hub. You send something from here to Taiwan, it goes to Memphis. So now we can talk about routers and intermediate routing nodes in a network. So they take your package and we put it on a conveyance called a truck and drive it over a physical road to the airport, at which point they take the package off the truck and put it on a different conveyance called an aircraft and fly that over a physical air route to Memphis. Now your package is going to arrive in Memphis at about 1 o'clock in the morning. Do the people in Memphis open the FedEx envelope and go through the content to make a routing decision? No. They just look at the network address. So things like routers in the network, they only have layer 1, 2, and 3. They don't have any application software. They don't have any presentation software. There's no point in them looking inside the packet because there's no reason to believe they could understand what it means. They could be written in Greek for all they know. No, they just look at the network address. And they're going to look up in a routing table, and it's going to say, well, if you want to get to Taiwan, you got to go to Hong Kong. So they're going to take your packet and put it on a conveyance called an aircraft and fly that over a physical air route to Hong Kong. And then they're going to put that on a different aircraft and fly that to Taiwan. And then we'll take it off that aircraft and put it on a different conveyance called a truck and drive it over a physical road to the actual building. We've been quite formal. We addressed this FedEx package to the receiving department at the company in Taiwan. Somebody walks up to you wearing a FedEx cap and hands you a slightly dirty, crumpled FedEx envelope and thrusts a clipboard in your face. What do you do? Well, you sign. And at this point, the network kicks back an acknowledgement to the sender saying that the package has been delivered. This is an important point. That's called a reliable network service when the network gives you an acknowledgement saying, yes, it was delivered. In other cases, the network does not give you an acknowledgement. 
like with the postal service you have to have the user at the far end tell you that they receive it that's called an unreliable network but in any case we get to the far end deliver the package the receiving department at the far end looks at the receiver and they say well that's us so they open the network envelope extract the contents throw the envelope away we don't need it anymore we're there and they look inside the contents of this packet and what it is is a heavy cardboard envelope addressed to the legal department so they pass it via the internal mail to the legal department a clerk there breaks open the wax seal extracts the document throws the heavy cardboard envelope away and sees that it's addressed to the word processing department so they check that the document's been received and charge some amount of money to the budget and then they send it via the internal mail to the word processing department those people take the envelope they receive slit it open extract the contents throw the envelope away and lo and behold there's a document in there with a yellow post-it note on it saying written in english in english and they check and see well the person that it's intended for they don't speak english they only speak mandarin and taiwanese so the word processing department at the far end has it recoded or translated into taiwanese so that they can present the information in this message to the far end person in a way that they understand so what we ended up doing was communicating thoughts from one person's brain to another but it goes all the way down through these protocols through the network and all the way back up again and notice the people in the word processing department at the far end those were the only ones who ever looked at that yellow post-it note so they are actually communicating at that level but their communications get carried by all of the lower layers so I hope that gives you a better idea of how this works from a procedural point of view. If we wanted to scribble some examples here, 